them one by one, and I beat all the 13 before I receive the prayer. You understand me now? But my best reading strategy is I like reading with fast questions. That's my best reading strategy. What I used to do when I was in school is this. I know that no, in the course, I would look for at least five year past question of that of that course. I will not only I will not just I will not just take the reading alone. I will write question one. First of all, I will, I will copy down my question. Write question one, I will write the solution from the textbook. I will search for the solution everywhere. No, the way you are doing the exam, you have to be thinking on how to answer. Is that not? I will not think I was how to answer them. How to, how to answer them. I will write the question. I will look for solution. I will put them down. One, two, three, four, five, six. If the three unit call, six questions. Then, the five of them, after I have stopped all those questions, I will now sit down. I will read them. Question, I will answer them. I will, question, I will answer them. I will now close it. I take another book. I will look at that question number one. Let me not do my own examination. But if you go to his bed at night, you will not see him there. Me, I don't know how to do that one. I sleep when it's time to sleep. So what I'm saying is, uh, know yourself. Know the best time for you to read. For, for me, I'm not a good night reader. So I try to make use of opportunities of the day. So if there are three periods in the day, I use it. If I have public holidays, in those days, I, there was a time I, I, I used to go to library. I can spend six hours there. Maybe after using like uh, one hour or there, about to look for materials. Then I stayed there. Before I know it, six hours is gone, I'm out of the library. So I used the library when I first started. Along the line, I decided to use like one completed building. Then this church was a tent then. So it was the building at the back here. It was not completed, but there are rooms upstairs. The reading location to avoid distraction and noise, I do that. That is my own strategy. Apart from that, and because of course there are other activities, fellowship, uh, fellowship leader, and all of that. And when it's time, maybe for exam periods, I don't read alone. At that time, I want to gather all the facts I've gotten. Because another thing that it depends on the nature of the course too. I'm, I'm an engineer. So once it's calculation based and put formulas and you are deriving and deriving, yes, I'm, all, I'm okay. But when it comes to courses that have to do with, you have to read through your made like text materials. And those ones, I will pick the material ones. Once I look at the paragraph by paragraph, this one is just story and history. I leave it, yes, this is the point. Each paragraph, I just try to underline, underline. I pick out the point. So next time I'm picking that material, I won't labor again from beginning. I just go to those points and try to memorize them. So that's, I also try to reproduce after reading. What I read, can I reproduce it? So that is it. Yes, the past question strategy is also there. I also use that. And the issue of, I was saying something, when it's time for like exam period, they have a colleague then. We used to be in this fellowship together then. Personal reading. But I will just ask a question. I may know it. And say, bro, this, 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 this. What do you think about it? He may not have a, enough idea, then I supply. I may think I know more. And the perspective is going to come out for me, become easier for me. I also learn from me. I do that, and that is the strategy actually I use. Yes, there's what they call mnemonic. Sometimes I look at points, I just try to form a kind of uh, maybe a shorthand way of rem memorizing those points. Those are some of the things I did. Then course materials too. And then some lecturers may give you some materials that is not looking coherent. Which one do I read? Which one do I not read first? So sometimes I look at some, some colleagues, they give out some useful material that when you read it, it makes the idea simplified. And I've done something like that I had A in courses that I thought was confusing. So we can also do all of that. So those are the basic strategies I used while I was on campus. And also, I leverage on people, as I've said before. It may not be my, uh, I would say, but because I look at this, at this place is like it's lending. What are they trying to say? I can just ask you, what's the, what's this one? And it tells me. I gather the point, I gather the point, and I'm good to go. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. How do I read? <laughs> well, uh, I'm, uh, in my own case, I, 
I'm a, shall I say, a wide reader. How I do my own reading is this. Because my own kind of course, uh, unlike my pastors, is not the calculation, calculation type. There are more of words and uh, all that. So, and it's very voluminous. So the first thing I do is to know the volume of work available to me. And then I read a lot. I read a lot. And when I pick my book, the first thing I do is I just read it like I'm reading newspaper. That's my first reading. Before I write exams, sometimes I read I just, I will leave them. From there, when I come back the second time, and God give me opportunity, I'm a fast reader. I can read very fast. If I, want, if I pick this material, and I say, this Bible, I want to finish it in two days, I can do it. But <laughs> it's not like I will know everything inside it. So, the second time, it is this time now, I will pay attention to details. Then, it is also at that time, I memorize facts. I begin to memorize facts that I have already noted. The third time that I will be reading, what I normally do at that time is that, at this time now, I'm focusing on examination. I will now put myself in the position of a lecturer. I say, if I, what question will I ask? That's how I do my own. So, I will then begin to think like a lecturer. So you must, sometimes it helps. When you try to say, if I am the lecturer, what will I ask in this area? It is then you begin to see the things that are important and things that are not important. So I will ask myself those questions. After I have asked myself those questions, I will then solve those questions. Like Pastor Lujola said, honestly, many a times, those are the questions I see in my exam. And uh, you know, when I was in school, uh, it, it, it got to a point that some people were thinking maybe I have expo. So when they knew that, oh, this one is a pastor, you will not see expo. Whenever exam is coming, you see, they will, all my colleagues, they will run to me and say, hey, pastor, what has the Holy Spirit said today? <laughs> Please don't know. <laughs> I say, which Holy Spirit? Well, I'm going to read your book. <laughs> But that's it. It's not as if there's one supernatural. Of course, God gives us ability. We are children of God. The Spirit of God works with us. But then, because I'm able to think and put myself and say, if I were the lecturer, what will I ask? And then I say, this one, this one. So there are some aspects of the work that usually, even if I read again and again, I may not be able to grab it by myself. So I organize group discussion. It is very good discussion. I bring up those hard not to crack. Then we sit down and we deal with it. If we cannot undo it, we will call our senior, who will come and put us through. And then I also use past questions. Now, before I, I have to say this, you see, as you see me, I I can read in the day, I can read in the night. But there's one thing about me: if I am reading or I'm doing anything, if I'm feeling sleepy, I'll leave it. I go and sleep. I don't force myself, because every time I force myself, I plant it, I don't learn anything. I would, in fact, there was a time, I remember in my own grade level, that was when God taught me lesson. I wanted to go and read. I said, today is from, from we will read it down. I went to one classroom, unfortunately for me, I, I just finished a bowl of eba. When I got to when I got to the uh, place, it was my friend. They, they said we are going for night reading, so I followed them, and then we started. I've not spent up to 30 minutes. I was just dozing. So I'll sleep, I wake up, then I will read three lines. 
I'll sleep again. It got to a point, I just put the book by the side, I put my head on it, I slept. But mosquito was biting me there. I was just suffering myself. At the end of the day, we came back to the room by 6 a.m. And everybody says, he has gone to his <laughs> I've not heard anything <laughs> since that day. I didn't go for night class again. Not only that, I don't go to read in the library, as you see me. Because our library then, they put AC everywhere. You see, the moment you enter, the place just cool down. The next thing is I will enter J1. So when I don't go there. I have my own corner. You know, I used to have some peculiar corner in the, in the university. I will go and look for them. I'll look for those places. I'll be the only one alone. Aha. I will start. I can stay there for six hours reading without any disturbance. So it's all about knowing who you are and that and what works for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. They've explained it all. Thank you so much, sir. They've explained it all. I have your past question. At this time, you should be with all your materials, your past questions. You should have everything with you. And then study, survey, ask questions. That's SQ3R. Read, revise, and review. And know yourself also is very important. If you are the day person, you read in the day, or you are the night person, you read in the night. Know yourself is very important. And when you do that, success is sure for you. Thank you so much, sir. All right, thank you so much, sir. It's been a wonderful time. I'm really, really learning a lot here. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. I um, want to briefly take some of the questions from the audience before we continue with our um, interview questions here. Um, sir, this question should be directed to you, sir. Um, he said, I'm a student with um, a mental health challenge. And um, he said, I need um, tips on how to pass my courses. And also, should this person tell um, his or her lecturers what he's going through, what he or she is going through? So he said, with um, mental challenges, how do we go about passing these examinations? And also, how do we handle it with his um, lecturers? Okay. Uh, well, uh, you see, we are so blessed in DSA Futa. Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. In this church, if you don't know, we have what we call the academic committee. This academic committee is headed by one of our pastors. And all our pastors are members of that committee. And uh, the purpose of that committee is to undo all your academic challenges. We meet, uh, I think, uh, at least once or once in a month. Usually we meet once in a month. But if there are emergency situations that demand that we meet, uh, we usually come together to handle. I think this situation is one that will require the attention of the academic committee. So I will advise the person who wrote this to come uh, and see me personally or see the academic director. We are going to uh, make sure that before the exam, we meet you at the academic committee level. There are some things we need to tell you. We can't say them here. They, are, they may be personal. But if there are mental health challenges, uh, there are different types. So it depends on which one you are facing. It is on the basis of that we will be able to help you and tell you what to do and what not to do. Thank you so much, sir. I have some questions here, and this is also directed to you, sir. Said, in medical school, there seems to be a kind of intimidation and low confidence in one's ability among the medical students, especially seeing your classmates moving stuff and answering questions in class. How do you overcome this? And also the person asks, when you were a medical student, how did you schedule your reading in terms of hours? The courses, how do you manage your time and ensure you read daily, considering the fact that you finish lectures and practicals late in the evening? I guess this person is a medical student. Let me first tell you in medical school, there is what we call the G factor. Are we together? The G factor is God. You may not be able to go through 
with your own natural strength alone. I can tell you here today that my going through medical school, the G factor is a big factor. Let me tell you what happened in my 400 level so that you will understand that you need to carry God along very well. In my 400 level, I, have a, I, I had a very serious challenge. Well, let me tell you, I lost my mother. It was just a week to our final exam. We were to start our final exam on Monday. My mother died on Thursday. And to make matters worse, she died in my hands. So if I pick book like this, I'll be seeing her. My, all my brain just went, I wasn't myself. And I had to pass this exam on Monday. I couldn't study anything. You know what I did? I just went back to God. I said, God, I am very weak now. This one, you need to carry me on your shoulder. Because <laughs> I don't even have any strength to do anything. You know, that exam that year was one of the toughest all through medical school. People that didn't even have challenges, they failed. May I tell you, brothers and sisters, how I passed it today, I don't know. So, sometimes, you need God. That's the first thing. Now, as to balancing your academics with your, all these things, it is the grace of God. I told you, in my 400 level, I was made the secretarial coordinator of the fellowship. Well, maybe you can ask the secretarial coordinator, you know the meaning of <laughs> what it means to be a secretarial coordinator in a DSF. Work never finish in the secretarial coordinator's office. Now, I, what one thing I do is this. Like Pastor Lujola said, I make sure that I don't go to sleep until I have done the day's work. For example, Many a time we finish our coordinators meeting by 12 a.m. at night. Why other coordinators go to their room to sleep? I move directly to the class. I must read between the hour of 12 and 2. It is until 2 a.m. that I will then go back to go and sleep. At least I set a goal of minimum of two hours per day. No matter how busy I am, I must fulfill two hours per day. And that is one secret in medical school, my brother. It is not uh, what I call it the secret of consistency. If you ensure that you read two, two hours every day, you cannot fail. You see, somebody, a student who reads two hours on Monday, two hours on Tuesday, two hours by Friday, looking at the reading hours, he will have read 10 hours in that week. Am I right? It's better than a student who has not read anything from Monday to Friday and woke up on Saturday and read 10 hours at a stretch. You see? It is consistency and diligence. Make sure that every day, a day will not go without you picking your materials and studying them. And everything you have been taught in a day, make sure you go through them before you go to sleep. The Lord will help you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. We are very, very grateful, sir, for um, everything with um, all the questions you've answered and addressed. Some questions here are kind of interrelated. If um, your questions have not been answered, you can see the um, DAS units for counseling, um, and they will take you through them. Pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Um, finally, before, you, um, before we take our leaves, I would like you to give us your final parting words for us as um, students concerning superlative um, success. Praise the Lord. The door shall live by faith. The door shall live by faith. That you are doing, believe God, no matter how difficult. I've told you, tell I'm in school, I, I had to look for how to make myself comfortable with it. I'm also um, one of the um, pillars of the fellowship that I run up and down. Then my friend will tell me, you, you are coming to go to church. 
But whenever they paste all the result, let me tell you something. <laughs> the judge shall live by faith. If there is only one here, it will be Odo. And he was the general coordinator of that fellowship. I pray God. I pray God will help you. If it's God, you will succeed. Let me tell you, this semester, the Lord is preparing 50 babies. Praise the Lord. Well, the Bible says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary, and they will walk and not faint. And God will give you that strength. So trust in God. Don't play games. Be playing with God. Have a time to serve God. Prioritize. It's about priority. It's not everybody who goes to nine class that has first class. Some say have carry over. It's not about that. So you need God to carry you to soar higher. Do your best. Read. Read over and over. I was not the best in my time, but I did well. And I believe God, he will do well. So just trust in God. Paul said, I can do all things. Be positive. Success starts from your mind. As Pastor said, if you change your mindset, everything about your life will change. So have the mindset of possibilities that I cannot fail. The Lord is by my side. Do your best and leave it in the hand of God. Sorry to say, I remember those days as a student. Yes, I finished from this campus. Before I came to Futa, we were the first set of a degree in Futa here, 2002, 2003 then. So before I came to Futa, they sent the timetable and everything to me. I just put my grades, this one A, that one A, that one this. The best at that time was 78, the best. 78. I had 73. At least I didn't need to beg anybody for admission. Praise the Lord. And getting through the campus too, yes, it was then DLC over the tough period. This place was Cocoa Plantation. We had to, you know, some fellowship was rough as maintenance coordinator, maybe academic director and all of that. But yet, God helped us. You will have your own testimony. So trust in the Lord. Read. Study your lecturers. Study the nature of courses. And I trust God, you will share testimony. Thank you. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am. Many other people, you have read stories of great men, he is still alive. He will help you. Yeah. I said he will help you. Yeah. Put your trust in God. Work hard. Study and pray. You will succeed in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, thank you so much, sir. We are very grateful, sir. Please, can you put a round of applause to all of them? Thank you so much. He heard them said, the just shall live by faith. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And also, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Take all these nuggets everywhere you go, and success is yours in Jesus' name. Let's give a standing ovation to our pastors as they take their leave. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, my name is Nancy. 
as yet a recent graduate of food science and technology from Fresno University of Technology at My name is Peter Abosede and I am an aspiring aerospace engineer with focus on autonomous system. I had my background in mechanical engineering from the Federal University of Technology, Accra. I am Timothy Adelaja. I'm a researcher. I'm a graduate of agricultural engineering from a CPS tutor. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alawali Abidaku. I studied um, agricultural and environmental engineering at. Uh, Okay, my name is Longsit Essien, a recent graduate of Food Science and Technology from Federal University of Technology, Korea. My name is Peter Abosede, and I am an aspiring aerospace engineer with focus on autonomous system. I had my background in mechanical engineering from the Federal University of Technology, Korea. I am Timothy Adelaja, I'm a researcher. I'm a graduate of agricultural engineering from a CPS tutor. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Alawali Abidaku. I studied um, agricultural and environmental engineering at um, the University of Technology at Kore, Faculty School of Engineering and Engineering Technology. So, to God's glory, I credited as the best candidate student of my faculty, faculty of engineering, and also of my department. I was selected as one of the 60 scholars across Africa, um, privileged to be. And I've been in the U.S. for the past one year now. I spent my first year. I was selected as one of the 60 scholars across Africa, um, privileged to be. And I've been in the U.S. for the past one year now. I and I think I'm just for the for those things that happened here yeah, because I know all things work together for good to them that love God. I thank God for that, that yes, all things work together for my good. And also I'm using this as an extension to you that all things work together for your good in Jesus' name. Actually, I didn't pick a Greek engineering at first. Um, I wanted to study mechanical engineering or uh, just like everybody would like to study mechanical engineering. But God, we have it. Um, <laughs> I was given agric engineering, even from pedigree. From pedigree. They wanted me to study agric engineering. And um, I tried, I worked out to in a way change the call, but it was not achieved. And the day I saw my name on the admission, is I cried to God, God, if you don't speak to me on why you want me to study this course, I will reject it. And God being, he saw my sincerity and I had an encounter that night. And that was enough for me. That was a motivation for me. And I held out to what to say, just follow this path. You go this path, you win your life in a short time. Just follow this path. So I'm encouraging a um, first year student. Um, if you have been given the course you didn't want to study initially, please don't be discouraged. Leave it in the hands of God. Pray about it. No God's with about it. And then you can um, stay on to it. What motivated me, actually, it wasn't really in mind, but I did food and nutrition, good level days. And I felt, oh, nutrition. <laughs> just because <laughs> science and technology just came. I actually got to understand more about it in the hundred level. So, if you have food science and technologies there in the house, you know that you're on the right track. <laughs> So financial challenges, that's sure. Uh, my dad was retired, my mom also retired, so I had to regard myself as a man. So this person you're seeing had carried the head pack for lab laboring, uh, for uh, bricklayer work. 
So all those kind of thing, all those kind of jobs, many of job I did during my undergraduate degree. Um, I also ventured into business of selling data, little profit, at least it was giving me something. And um, yeah. I also had challenges with lecturers that were not really interested in student success. But that God actually raised people for me. God raised lecturers for me and to fight for me. I can remember in my final year, one of my professors had to tell the assistant lecturer that was involved in a course that he owned. The professor is the owner of the course, but he gave it to the assistant lecturer to take over. By the time he saw my result, the professor had to call the assistant lecturer. If this, if you don't give this boy A in this course, <laughs> don't submit that result. It was the examiner that was telling me all these things after I graduated. So God fought for me and um, he was really faithful to me. Personally, I faced different challenges, challenges of points, finance, challenges of you know, inability to access materials because at some point, you know, I had to, for instance, Genesis 103 or 106, I think 103. So then, then, then at one time, it was not a composite thing that you get the material. So I felt I don't get the material that the, the handbook, I felt part, I don't need the handbook, I just need it. not mean that it will really, really affect me. So towards the end of the of the semester, that semester, I discovered that I actually needed the book, but it was too late for me to get the book. I had to wait for those that had the book to study their book. I know what that means. Even night of tests, like while they were studying, I had to wait for them to just finish study and give me a pass with the book. So it was when they were asleep. And not only JLS, but from JLS. There's other times too that, you know, I was just allow people to use their, for instance, Genesis 101 and 102. So then I didn't have a laptop, so I had to, you know, borrow a laptop and you know, just, just because I knew that I'm, I want to achieve something and pursue something. Well, there are challenges I face too, I face challenges. And um, first of all, I deferred my admission. So it was hard blending. I was either at the HOD's office, I was at Senate, rectifying things. It wasn't easy and it took my time. But what I overcame it was the fact that I made sure that I balanced my time, removed excesses that could take out the little time I had to read. And also, I there was pressure. You know, being that five plus students and all those stuff, it is good, it is beautiful, it is good. And by God's grace, I was a good student. And having those five plus is really good. But there's some pressure that comes with it. You know, yes, you are good. Someone is coming here two weeks for exam. Please hang up with this student. Please hang up with this. Please hang up with this. It's kind of built a, um, a pressure that they want, they expect you to know it. <laughs> they don't care whether you've read that person, they expect you to know it. Well, I overcame that knowing that we learn every day and I don't, I can't know everything. Even my lecturers don't know everything. So I had to bring myself to that consciousness that I do not know everything. You might be a good student there, you might be an A straight A student there. Dealing with those kind of pressure, you should come to the consciousness that you do not know everything. So I came to that consciousness that, oh, I do not know everything. And then that was what helped me. And also the fact that I had to also um be able to say no at some point it was hard because you want to help everybody but you cannot have the time to help everybody so you just try your best provide materials that could help them so and also pressure of being in class and then there is a question coming up and then nobody knows it and everybody's going to do you said you don't say you don't know that could answer so it was a pressure of high expectation people expect high from you they know that they believe you know everything but that's not the truth that's not there that that's not the truth you really do not know everything you keep learning and the pressure came with that i needed to keep reading it was a good pressure at some point because i needed to keep reading keep um gaining knowledge and it helped me also at many points in life. There was also the time management. Time management, 
when you are you are a leader, you're a worker. In fact, being a worker taught me how to manage my time. Let me be frank with you. And um, but I still I had the challenge at first, but I saw that. I prayed to God about it and I had this timetable, this MEP sheet where I was able to write out many things can work for you. But was what worked for me. And I was able to have the timetable to keep to time. Your yours could be a to-do list. You could have a reminder that reminds you you need to do this. And you could also it could also be discipline. Discipline yourself in managing your time. So that was another challenge I faced. Time management. I was able to manage my time. So in terms of time management and, you know, managing my time, I was into many things. I was in, you know, extracurricular activities, volunteering my my time. I was in the church, walking in the church, doing the little I could. I, you know, have to plan out time to read and plan out time to also do my assignments. So balancing of those things as a first year, second year undergraduate student can be really difficult. You need to be able to sit down and make a draft of what really matters and what don't really matter. So when you know you're here for study, the priority that comes first is your study, right? But I'm not saying you should take God apart. You put God in the middle and let other things revolve around God. Yes, that's how you plan your time. But at the same time, you should know that, you know, the, 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 the time to study, the time to review some of the things you've been taught in class, the time to do your assignment are really, really important. And extracurricular activities are also second. They are not the main thing. That's why they are called extracurricular. They are not the main curricular stuff. So you really need to be able to like structure them to what is most important, what is important, and what is less important. There's what they call the Einstein Tower, in which you can, you know, you know, read about or you it's called Einstein metrics. You can Google it and you'll be able to find the result as regards that and how to manage your time effectively. And also when you're trying to manage your time effectively, it's also, it's also important to plan in, 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 with a sense of short, medium and long term. So you want to see this thing I'm doing, what effect will it give me in the next one year, two years, right? Three years. An example is, for example, you know that the course you're doing right now will serve as a prerequisite for something you do in your third year. So you really want to take it serious compared to something you're doing like an extracurricular, which can speak for you maybe in the next five years. So you can see how you, you know how to like pick what is most important and how to channel your energy effectively to it because time and energy sort of balances each other. And the second thing is focus. We have a lot of distractions, social media, um, people doing things and it's as if you want to be there. You want to be able to do that thing at the same time because of the passion you have. But there is need to focus, to distract yourself from distraction. Yeah. So focusing is all about finding that thing which you really love. Let's say you do mechanical engineering or you're in electrical engineering. Yes, you love electrical engineering. But you need to find that thing that you really love in electrical engineering. Let's say you want to dealing with photo, photo, photonics right or photoelectrics or things around electronics or things around telecommunication you want to start channeling your energy so that that serve as a kind of holding for you so when you're having challenges and you're trying to lose focus something keeps reminding you that see you won't be able to pursue that your dream of telecommunication if you're unable to stay focused on this path and get the necessary skill and knowledge required to be able to play a role in that particular field in the future. So focus is really important. A lot of distraction will come. Our younger years are majorly for developing capacity because when you grow old, the chances of getting a job um, goes more to the younger people. And the second thing that we really help you is um, the, the, the fact that you are an expert in a particular field. So. The five years of undergraduate studies, the four years of undergraduate studies are there to build capacity, not just you acquire knowledge. So you want to really focus and know that that which you're focusing on will pay you off in the future. Leadership Pro, I was once um, academic director right there in the fellowship and um, 
I'm also glad to see people that uh, I tutored <laughs> becoming uh, tutors in parting life in the fellowship. Um, what else? Um, I also I was a member of um, Impact Leaders Club. It is a leadership club, and uh, we gave out some donations to old people home in Akure in Awule, geriatric or something like that. And we also made some contributions in the university, and by ensuring green environment, planting, and the likes. And most importantly, um, we provided leadership um, skills onto members of the club. And yeah, I really enjoyed um, my membership in the club. I was also a facilitator assistant, actually, uh, for Get Gas Nigeria, Get Educated, Get a Skill. And um, I was able to pioneer some um, campaigns in Akure, like um, we had the educational program and skill development program at Fiwashai Guest College, um, just at, um, what's the name of that place? I think Lafayette also. No, not Lafayette. I don't know. I've forgotten. So, <laughs> be able to do for me, I can say I've actually helped me to where I am today. Um, I can remember I participated on the academic side in helping to build a club, right? In school, motor club. Many people who are in the engineering department will know the club. I help with design some of the things that needs to be done in the club. And um, under my administration, I was a project lead for a work, you know, trying to coordinate all of the mechanical engineering students and other students who are also interested in the club. Um, that was one part I volunteered. In that particular, you know, volunteering process, I was able to learn management. It was more like a try and error thing, organizing team and collaboration, right? Because in the 21st century, one thing that is most important is the ability to collaborate. The world is becoming much more collaborative. So I was able to get myself exposed to that. And because the onus lies on me then to like um, bring many of the club members to what the latest technologies is all about because of the project we wanted to design that you know sent me back to my um in our room and you know to the library and doing personal research phones through the internet through books to sh- make sure that i have all the things to give to the people so with that i mean i was able to develop some level of leadership um skills and also develop my knowledge outside the normal academics and the second is spiritual right which i wish i'm really grateful for today i can remember the very first thing i started with in futa was um all representative i was all representative in ebule right i was also a member in the evangelism team i was sometimes in the choir <laughs> yeah and um, later on, I was, you know, selected, privileged to be selected to serve as a sector coordinator. Through all of these, I made a lot of mistakes in my year of service, right? I learned a lot of things. I learned how to relate, how to be much more sociable with people because I was much more introverted. Apart from being an academic student, at least of all, I was also a social student. In the sense that I was actually deputed to serve the board, and by grace of God, I served in the of as a worker and also as a leader. And I can see that all these things definitely came to play a pivotal role in my life because with the activities of the church and leadership, I was able to organize my life, like I was able to have an organized life. So when I hear people say I can't combine church and school together, I was like, really? I have many friends that they, 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 they choose academic that I can't be, I can't serve, but I'll do this with academic and I'll be this way. Although it might work for some persons, but some of them, they're they nothing to write to me about. Because the fact that they feel 
since I'm, I have nothing else, I have, I have all the time, I have that, I need to one thing or the other. So the few that is enough. But I tell you that being a worker really, really shaped my life because I was able to organize myself. You know, when I know I'll be in, I'll be in church for Bible study. I know I'll be in church for that meeting. I know I have a whole meeting on Wednesday. I know I have never hour on Thursday, nice prayer on Friday, and workers meeting on Saturday. So it, I tell you that I don't have time for you know time for for, for exercises. Like I don't have time for any other things that are not important. I have to give like any small any time I have like this and that yes I'm really utilizing it. Time management and by grace of God soon all the teachings of our pastors of our leaders came to play a pivotal role in our life. So the first is prayer. Um, a lot of people ignore prayer. You only pray only when you know you're in the congregation, and you don't pray specific prayers for your career or your desires in terms of academics. You can sh- maybe you pray pr- prayers for oh God. I re- I really want to pass this course. I really want this. I I want this to happen and that. But you don't pray prayer for your desires. I I am always praying a prayer of God. I want to become an aerospace engineer. I want to be able to you know get my hands dirty on designing some things. And because I'm was always telling God my desire, He wa- He knows you have those desire, but He wants you to tell Him most of the times and because you're not just having desire you're a person who is driven by purpose you place on this head by purpose for a purpose i mean sorry the devil will also do everything possible to frustrate you to ensure that you don't achieve that purpose because you're working for the kingdom of god so prayer is really really important in this journey of life if truly you want to be successful Success means different things for different people. But if you really want to be successful, you really want to be able to achieve your dream. To me, I define success as being able to achieve that which God, you know, have asked me to do. So at every point in time, if I'm able to receive the necessary grace to achieve what is needed to be achieved, then I can say I'm successful. Paul the Apostle was able to achieve many things. He said, not by his own strength. He said, I labor much more abundantly than you people. He said, but by the grace of God on me. So he recognized the place of grace. And that you want to become an engineer, you want to become a doctor, you want to be a scientist. It's not going to be by your own strength, especially if you're in the kingdom of God. It's going to be the influence of grace upon your life. So prayer is one thing for me. Where I am today, the doors opening for me is not because of my own smartness or my my books, my books. No, it's because of prayer. The second thing is hard work. Yeah, hard work. Like, hard work is really, really important. You need to put in the sweat. You need to be able to, you know, sweat out the time. You need to be able to, like, um, be serious when other people are playing. You need to be able to sacrifice. I said before, before glory, there must be some level of sacrifice. Even if you look through the scriptures and through many life situations, many people are successful today. When they tell you their stories, you know that, yes, they've put in a lot. They say there's no star without a scar. So you need to be able to pay that sacrifice. You can't just have your cake and eat it. You can't just say, oh, um, they say that work smart, so you not work hard. No, no. There's a, there's a part of working hard uh, and yet working smart. So don't just ignore the hard work. Hard work is what differentiates people in life. So I worked hard. Um, and the third thing is harnessing every opportunity. So um, Solomon found out something. He said the race is not for the sweet. He said neither is it for men of skill. He said time and chance. I pin it onto them all. But the question that often comes to my mind is that chance. Yes, you're utilizing your time, you're working hard, but that chance. I think that everybody is not able to see the chance, even when it's around them. It's because there's a light that you must have, which is in God, that will allow you to identify chances and opportunities to apply to, to utilize whenever they come your way. What differentiates every man today is because of the, how much they utilize the opportunities that have come their way. So, I've had opportunities to intern in the best of the best places in aviation. 
and that's because i you know solicit for information i try to look for information and when i get those information i see every possible means to see how i can get into some of these organizations through prayer and my hard work but being able to spot opportunities is really important it's a very important skill so i'm grateful to god that i was able to like not just have the learnings in school because they are not enough what really matters is what you are able to do because when you say value which everybody is trying to do people pay you because of the value you are able to give or the need you are able to meet so and if you want to meet the need you must be able to do something so it's not just about having knowledge today we have ai so ai have a lot of knowledge you want to ask a question ai can provide that knowledge for you but you need to be able to need do something with your hand being able to utilize your own personal intelligence to carry out something that another man cannot easily replicate so i one thing I, i i really did was you know looking for the best of the best places in aviation i more pursuing to intern first with the Nigeria College of Aviation Technology and Cats in Zaria where i began to learn the basics of aircraft i was introduced to every type of aircraft and how they are maintained then god moved me from there i moved on to the Nigeria Air Force where i served for one year and worked with them i was in i was opportunity to work on some of the fighter aircraft that were used in fight against Boko Haram and when i was to buy some aircraft from the US i was you know Sailing at the at the at the at the base at that particular time, and had the opportunity to interact with many of the um, engineers and pilots, and see how things are really done in the military environment. I also went ahead to work with another organization, which is like the 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 largest private helicopter services in sub-Saharan Africa, um, Cavatin Helicopters. So that like provided me with enough experiences. together with the knowledge i have in mechanical and aeronautics to to push me forward and i'm here today still getting more experience and not just getting sparse experience but channeling my energy in that particular area of focus and what god has called me to, to do so that is what my advice would be for as many who, who who are pursuing a particular um field of study or a particular purpose in which god have assigned them to So you need you need to be able to be wise ask for wisdom to to you know utilize your time and design your life in a way that is in a particular direction so you want to seek those opportunity that will keep you on track not off track yeah to those around you at all your fellowship and su kind of lifestyle is not for vain you still graduated with the best result so i pray the lord grant you success in this forthcoming exam the lord uh, favor you before your lectures and perfect scores shall be everyone's portion in jesus name thank you so much thank you very much take care of yourself bye
academic giants is Daniel know what's reckoning with for well, here comes help I hear whispers saying here is the way take no thought for the morrow for the morrow even takes thought for itself of course morrow is another thought for another morrow life is turn by turn and at times turn by turn and at times turn by turns you can yes you can yet you can I seem overweight, when I seem perplexed, disturbed, challenged, heartbroken, disturbed, distressed, I'll find solace in the rock of ages, 
I'll raise my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help is coming from the Lord, the maker of heaven and the earth. I'll push so hard. I'll push through, even when it is so hard. Friends, I will rise again. Say to yourself, I will rise again. Superlative success. Only a tag. It's a function of you to make it a reality. Superlative success I shall find. And my soul is in disrepute. I'll anchor fast to the rock of ages. Here. There. And then, superlative success I shall get. You may mock me today, but mock me no further. Because I found in him a father that is said to take me so further. You teach my hands to walk, and ultimately, I will teach others to. Actually, it's an adventure. It may take time, may take minutes, may take seconds, may take time, may take years, but definitely, I will land safely. I know with one man, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, he has seen the end from the beginning. He has programmed for me superlative success. When I dive safely with him, he will take me safely to the arena of superlative success. Thank you. the energy. Can you give your hands a clap again? A louder amen. Ask somebody beside you, say, what is your expectation tonight? Say, what is your desire tonight? Say, what is your longing tonight? Say, what are you thirsty for tonight? Where are you? Answer them. You get it. Clap your, clap, clap your hands together. Amen. Now, we're moving to the next panel session, and the uh, title is Stra Striving Strategies for Superlative Success. Striving Strategies for Superlative Success. And before us, I mean, uh, the uh, a past, uh, uh, lecturers that will be speaking to us, they are uh, lecturers that most of us are familiar with. I think each and every one of us, if you are Afrotarian, probably are familiar with some of them. And I want you to make up your mind to ensure you get the best from them. So I will get the best from this session. And uh, as we are calling their names, please ensure you share them with what your uh, ends. Ensure you share them with your ends. The first uh, lecturer or the first uh, speaker I will be calling is Professor Ayodeji Sunday Afolabi. <laughs> amen. I know you, I know, amen. I know you want to clap, but let me, let me tell us a brief thing about them, probably as I'm saying it. As you are clapping, please keep uh, hearing. Professor Ayodeji Sunday Afolabi graduated with the first class division in the Department of Mathematics Science in Puta in 2004. After graduation, he has given automatic employment in the same department in the year 2011 due to his passion to impact lives. This academic enigma with a passion to fulfill destiny continues. <laughs> Amen. Don't worry, you will see clap after. Let me, let me. Let. Amen. This academic enigma with a passion to fulfill destiny continued his sojourn in the academics, which led him to register for his Master of Technology in the department during 
uh, the 2011-2012 academic session and completed it with a sterling distinctive performance of CGPA of 4.87 out of 5.0 in the year 2014. The award-winning lecturer and intellectual par excellence has many laureates to his credit, which include the following. Special award for obtaining the first class in mathematics, second BGS in mathematics, most outstanding lecturer of the year award in FUTA 2018. Dr. A.S. Apolabi, hello. Dr. A.S. Apolabi, popularly called your father. <laughs> <laughs> By Futa student has a unique teaching skill, the dexterity with which he imparts knowledge is second to none. I have the singular honor to announce to the August occasion that Dr. A.S. Afolabi has been selected as one of the winners of Nigerian Outstanding Lecturer of the Year Award. The award will be conferred on him on 5th October this year by Sleward, the largest award body in Nigeria. Dr. A.S. Afolabi is happily married to Dr. Mrs. Afolabi Fumilayo, Agnes, and their union is blessed with children. If you are happy, can you? Amen. You're welcome, sir. And to our next speaker, we have Professor Bolale Ojoko. Amen. Graduated from Ondo State University, which is now Ekiti State University, as the best graduating student in the Faculty of Computer Science. She obtained a master's degree in 2003 and a PhD in 2010 in Computer Science Department in Futa. She was on a research visit to Peking University, Beijing, China in 2009 and 2010. She became a professor in 2019. <laughs> professor Bolanle Ojepo has striven to attain superlative success inspired of diverse challenges she has faced so far. She has other researchers over the years in the field of artificial intelligence with particular interest in information featuring and extraction and recommender system. She has won grants within and outside the country. Furthermore, she has spoken and participated in international countries, which include Hungary, Finland, Brazil, Singapore, Egypt, Germany, China, and US. Amen. I know you would love to hear this. She is currently the HOD of information system, serving in different committees in FUTA, including all mistress, GBU All Member, the World Academy of Science, etc. She loves God and has served in different capacities, including DLCF. Financial Coordinator, Corpus Fellowship Secretary Coordinator. Should I tell you this? You are not saying yes. Should I tell you this? She loves singing and writing. She's blessed with a lovely family. Amen. And to our last speaker, his name is Dr. Komolafe Akiola Adesuji. <laughs> Amen. He was born on the 20th of December, 1975. He had his primary education at the Holy Trinity Primary School, Ikere. Um, I had his secondary school at Anoshan Secondary School, Ikere, and his tertiary education at the United Nations University, Tokyo, Japan. <laughs> also at the University of Twente, ITC, the Netherlands, at 2008 to 2010. And the Federal University of Technology, Akure, Ondo State, from 1998 to 2003. He had a PhD in sustainab Sustainability Science, GIS-based Flood Risk Assessment in Tokyo from 2013 to 2016. And Master's in Geo-Information Science and Earth Observation, Applied Earth Science. And he had his BTEC in Applied Geophysics 
in our career and other numerous certifications to his credit. Dr. Komolafe is an active member of the numbers of professional bodies. He has, he has a work experience in several prestigious places since 2002 till date. <laughs> to his credit and many fellowships award, which we cannot mention because of our time, and has enjoyed research grants. Dr. Komolafe has written publications to his name. Uh, for this reason, if you are happy, and let me say more happy, can you give them again a round of applause? <laughs> Amen. Should I say the louder your applause now, the, loud, the higher what you will get from them? <laughs> Amen. And now we'll call our uh, questionnaires. Those who will be asking questions from them, we have uh, Sister Precious and Brother Daniel. Can we put our hands together as a comfort? <laughs> Tell somebody beside you, I will receive something superlative in this session. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. If you know you are here for superlative, so say, say louder, amen. amen. If you know you are a scholar and you want to be a scholar for God, say louder, amen. amen. Good evening once again, sir. Good evening, ma. We're so happy to have you in our means. So happy. Thanks for the accepting the invitation. So happy because of the great things you have heard from you, by within your power, and also we believe that they are going to be transformed and empowered by your word of knowledge today. Thank you very much. So we'd love to ask some questions, some uh, important questions from the students and also some questions that, uh, that is very necessary, question that is very important that can uh, help the brethren for them to upscale and for them to be on top of their academics. First and, first and foremost, I would love to ask the question, how does one answer question? I'd love to ask Dr. Fulavi. Okay. Thank you for that question. How do you answer questions? Especially in a university system like ours, the best university of technology. So, yes, I mentioned that to tell you this. We require the best set of answers from you. The first thing is you must understand the question. You don't understand a question, or you, normally you don't get the answers to questions you do not understand. So the, there is need for you to first of all understand the question before you begin to answer such questions. And if possible, you also need to understand the examiner. Some examiners need detailed answers. You list out the points, you explain one after the other in details. While others will just want you to give short answers to each question. So if possible, as much as possible, you need to understand the examiner. But in case, in some instances where you don't even know the examiner, try as much as possible to understand the question and answer it as much as you can. Give all of the details you know. Even if he needs just short answers, I'm sure he will not penalize you for giving other details. So, and for you to get the answers to questions correctly, you need to be vast and to have a good knowledge of that subject area. When you have enough knowledge, then you'll be able to give more details and good, give good answers and detailed answers to such questions. Thank you very much, sir, for that insightful explanation. I believe that of all art that uh, we have to understand the concept of every course we are doing and know um, the pattern of how every lecturer marks and how they expect us to answer our question. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, um, praise the Lord. So as we go on with the panel session, if you have any question, please pass it to um, the ushers around so that they will get it across to us and we have our parents here to answer them. Lord bless us in Jesus' name. 
So I have this question here. How do lecturers mark? One might think he has killed an exam, like has done it perfectly, but then sees wonders when results are out. So how do lecturers mark? Mommy, mommy. Um, usually we prepare marking schemes or marking guide and model answers. So we, there are some answers we have in mind you know, for each question. And uh, if you deviate from them, there might be, it might, that might affect the scores that you would get. Now, most times those guides we, get, we prepare from the course lecture notes. But if you are a good student and you go outside the lecture notes to do some extra work, you should be sure you have not um, gone in a wrong direction. You have not deviate, deviated from you know, the materials you are given. That is important. Uh, so um, we use the guide. And then when there are some deviations, you know, you are the course lecturer, you have a broad knowledge of those, uh, the topics and the questions. So even if there are some deviations from what you have in the lecture notes, you still know if the answers given are correct, then some, that might affect some people, you know, negatively for some lecturers. For some, you might just consider and say, okay, Maybe um, it might not affect you as such. So we use guide. But one important thing is that there is still psychology in marking. For instance, you are to answer three questions. The, you don't know one, maybe number one, and that is what you answer first. By the time the lecturer starts marking, he discovers that this is, this is uh, not being presented properly this is likely to be a bad student. You know, that can affect the, the, the psychology of marking other, other uh, um, or questions. So it will be good if you're answering questions to start with the best, the one you understand best. It might be the one even in the last, that is the last question in that, um, that course. So you go from the best, that would also help, uh, can help um, your, you know, your scores. Then apart from that, some people have very bad handwriting. You know, that is another thing that puts a lecturer off. You know, when marking. You know, try and, uh, you know, you write well. It's not late. <laughs> you know, some people would say, I'm too old, I can't change my handwriting. I know it's not late. If it's good, you have good handwriting and you make nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mom. Thank you very much, Mom, for that uh, insightful explanation. There's one thing that Mommy said that that I really, I really take hold to like. I really appreciate that a lot, Mom. The Mommy saying that once you want to start question exam, you have to start with the best one because of the psychology and the mindset. You now people say, what you foresee determines how you follow, like how you follow through with either reading or with marking. Yeah, and, and I really appreciate that, man. I'm talking about starting with the best question that, that you best understood so that the lecturer that is marking it will be able to have it in mind that, okay, uh, this particular student is an intelligent student. Thank you very much, man. Let's, let's clap our hands together. Praise the Lord. I believe that we are gaining um, insight and also our mind is being transformed for superlative sources. As we continue, I pray that you, your expectation will not be cut short in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Going to the next question here. And the question says that, is it advisable for a 111 student we're just coming up to combine skill with academics. A lot to say. Sorry. Uh, 
Okay, yeah. I should repeat the question. Okay, is it advisable for an underlevel student who is just coming up to combine skill with academics? Like, is it underlevel and uh, you need to have a very good CGP? All right. Okay. Um, well, as underlevel students, we, of course, you know that when you just come in as underlevel, your aspiration is firstly you want to be successful in your academics. Of course, at the starting point, you are desirous to achieve greater success. Now, combining skill with academics, you know, sometimes, yeah, like a speaker once said here that uh, you are in this university for this undergraduate course to acquire certain skills, especially in your field able to attain your desired success. But for under level, there's need for you to be focused. Number one, you want to ensure that while you are in the school, you focus on your academic. That doesn't mean that you cannot learn all that skills that, you know, that will help you in the course of your, uh, course of your, uh, because of your work, actually. But basically, your academics is very, very important. Uh, I'll cite an example. There are some students in the school, for instance, who are not performing very well in the department. Why? Because they decided to, you know, deviate and start doing other things. They are not balancing the academics with other skills they are trying to acquire. I'm not saying it's not, you know, it's very good for you to actually have other skills acquired in the course of your academics, but make sure when you come in as underlevel students, you want to have a good foundation in your academics. You want to achieve success. And that's why you need to follow the principles of success and ensure that you do your work as what, and what you are supposed to do at, at the right time. And uh, in the course of doing this work, once you have actually got your foot on the ground, you can learn a lot of skills and the process, and in such a way that you don't allow one to affect the other. A student wants uh, the school, I mean, the school gave him, I think uh, they suspended him because he was not performing very well, very well in the academics. And uh, the parent had to come to us, and when, they, when she came, and later we now understand that this guy was actually going to learning music and going about singing, everywhere. Yes, he had a very good skill. He could sing, and uh, he was going about, you know, doing all sorts of, you know, concerts here and there, forgetting about the primary purpose why he was in school. Now, there are different type of skills you can acquire. There are some skills you acquire that actually goes along with the course you are learning. For instance, somebody studying computer, yes, you should be able to learn some programs. Of course, you are going to be taught, but then you can as well project ahead and start learning some programming skills. Like in my field, GIS and remote sensing, you know that the current situation is that you need uh, skills like machine learning, you want to know how data mining and all that. You know, yes, underlevel students, you are learning basic courses. At the same time, you want to acquire some knowledge. You are gradually, you are not allowing that to affect your core courses. It's very, very important because if you don't pass that one, there's no way you can, you know, graduate. So that's why you need to focus on why you are here. At the same time, you can, you know, learn other ones. So advice I would give for under level is that take first thing first. And the first thing first is your reason why you are in FUTA, your courses, Physics 101, Chemistry 101, do it perfectly. As you progress, then you can add other skills, especially skills that can help your career. Okay? Yeah, there are other skills you can as well attach to it, but there are also what will make you relevant afterwards. That's what I will advise you to do. Thank you. Th thank you very much, sir. We're grateful. So in addition to what Daddy has said, we are to, as under level students, focus on your academics. And at the same time, don't forget your dreams, your aspirations. So as you proceed on this campus, you can work on them alongside your academics. I pray the Lord be all for in Jesus' name.
So this question, it says, what can you say about a Christian student who tries his best but still comes out with low grades? Okay, I want to say. Okay. Uh, yes, what I can say about a, a Christian student who tries his best and comes out with low grade. I will cite an example of myself. Myself. You know, when I came to Futa, I graduated from here, so, and, uh, uh, all right, thank you very much. Uh, when I came to campus, I had the vision I wanted to become the best. That, that was my vision. I wanted to have first slides. And because of that zeal, I came in for applied geophysics, and uh, we used to hear a lot of stories about applied geophysics. Nobody ever had first class. The only second person that had first class was in 1992, and nobody will ever have it. So, yeah, the fear. Yes, I was actually serious, but the fear pushed me to start reading, you know, master of all, I mean, jack of all trades and master of none. We started going about, going to classes, doing that. Even myself, that I know that I cannot read in the night. I don't like reading in the night. I prefer daytime. And yet, I will go to class, sleep there, come back home, like the other uh, pastor said. I'll come back home as if I pray, you know. And yes, after first semester, when the result came out, I, I thought I had read. And the old, ask me what was the grade. <laughs> 2.64. <laughs> You know, now I thought I was good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I thought I was good. Honestly, I thought I was good. I was crying like a baby when I saw the result. The only thing that helped me was I didn't have carryover. You know, then in the fellowship, the same DLCF here, and uh, I met with one of our academic directors, I remember him. He said, Bro, he, how do you read? How do you study? And I explained myself, I read, I did this. You know, it's not like that. It's taught by, you know, gira gira. You want to be like others. Are you getting it? But understand yourself first. Some people feel they are good and they are doing a lot, and yet they are not reading anything. They are not getting. They are still busy reading and do what? Studying. You understand? So they keep on finding themselves you know, at the lower level. Why am I here? You need to really come to realization why is my result like this. If you keep on doing the same thing, you keep on getting the same results. Now, first semester had gone, and he told me that I now came to my senses. Why am I following people? I want to become like them. I want to go into class. I want to go to class. I want to do that. I said, hey, I need to study myself. And I started studying myself. And that was when I started picking up. And by the grace of God, I graduated with a very good second class offer at the end of the day. And at the end, you know that things change. In fact, to the extent, I, I was not even reading as I was reading in 100 level. Because at 200 level, I became follow-up coordinator. I was even crying. I said, I don't want to become any leader in the fellowship. And thereafter, they said, you will be a standard coordinator. I said, wow, upon all these things, I'm trying to build something. But do you know that in the process, you know, I was like getting in the list of my grade was being four points, four points every semester. I was like, oh, I think I missed it in the under level. If I had known, I would have studied myself first. Now, for somebody in that situation, now, like I said, realize yourself how you have been reading. If you have not been doing what you're supposed to do, change the tactics, okay? And start studying hard. We have been told about how to succeed. If you have not actually followed the normal principle, follow it. But then, the factor, the God factor, is another thing. It's another thing. Like I said, I didn't want to, I was coming to fellowship, but I don't want to join any, I was, I joined working team, but I don't want to work. I don't want to be a leader in any way. But eventually, you know, when I put God first, and things changed. So if you're in that situation, things will change. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Hey, 
Amen. Amen. I believe that we're enjoying this um, panel session and we're getting a lot from it. And I'm believing that after this session today, there'll be a great change in our academics positively. And uh, there may be a lot of questions that will be going through your mind and you know, try to meditate on some things that our lecturer have said. I want to tell you and urge you that this panel section is for you and it's for your growth, especially in your academics. I'm believing that everything, every single thing that you've been hearing or, or that you have had, I want you to really take note of it. And I pray that God will give us palliative success in Jesus' name. Amen. So, so continue on the question. Firstly, I would love to appreciate the uh, lecturer. Thank you so far. Thank you for everything for the question, sir. So as I continue with the question, I would love to ask a question here. And this question is going to, okay, it's going to do with entrepreneur and reading, like how to combine entrepreneur and reading. So the question says like this, what can you say about an entrepreneur who loves his job but does not like reading? Okay, just like someone that loves entrepreneur, he loves to, to do business and everything, but he does not like reading and he wants to pass. So, <laughs> the question is, so what, are we, what, what, what advice do you have for that kind of song? Um, entrepreneurship is good. Um, Many times I teach uh, business entrepreneurship in uh, computing, and uh, many times I tell my students that you can't be rich as a civil servant because it's uh, you are serving you are serving the government and you continue to save. You know, for years your salaries might increase, but you can't really be really be outstandingly rich. You know, as a, as a salary earner. So if you are good in entrepreneurship, it, it's a good thing. So it's what you should develop. But then, you came to Futa for a purpose. You know, your studying here will boost that entrepreneurial venture or the entrepreneurial skills that you have. Because if you are a graduate of whatever course you read in Futa and you go into entrepreneurship, you can't be the same with somebody who did not enter university to study anything. There is no way you, you, uh, you will be at the same level because the knowledge you gained here will help boost those uh, you know, the, the ventures, you, you, the entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial venture. So it's important you uh, pursue your study. It's just for uh, five years. So um, you can be managing the small, small businesses you are doing, but wisely. You put, uh, give your studies priority. And then because you still have a lot of time ahead of you, you are still young. So the, the one you are doing here, it's just by the way, but your study, I say, is number one, irrespective of the course you are studying. Thank you. Let's clap our hands together. Let's clap our hands together. Come on. Amen. 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 So we continue in the panel session, and we have a question here from the audience directed to Dr. Afolabi. It says, how do you prepare for CPT questions that require thinking on the spot and you don't know the topic. <laughs> Let me get it clear. You don't understand the topic or because no may I tell you this. When you come to the university system like like ours, at the beginning of the semester you have the course synopsis, the scheme, the topics you have to cover in that course. Are you listening please? Now, by assumption, the day you are, you are given the course, course synopsis, you have been taught all the course content. Because here, we don't usually 
entertain complaints like we were not taught this topic. You are matured enough to go to the library to, to develop the content, to go online to study. So saying that you go for a CBT exam, or CBE as we call it, and you don't understand the topic, or you don't know the topic, then there is no magic, there are no two ways about it. If you don't know it, the best thing you can do is to guess and leave the hall. Since <laughs> in Futa we don't have negative marking. If there is negative marking, it is better for you to leave it blank. Like sometimes ago, two students came out from uh, the computer big exam for MTS, that one, no one, one, no two. And one of them was telling the other one, say the system was just giving him the difficult questions. <laughs> that shows he didn't prepare well for the exam. So please, for all of your courses, get the course content, meet those ahead of you, your one year, two year senior, get their notes, look at what they were taught, and begin to study. In some courses now, and maybe the lecturer has covered just one or two topics. Some would we wait till a week or two weeks before exam, before he gives you the whole note. And you may not have the time to digest all of this, but a good student will have done his homework. So what do you do? The best thing is not to find yourself in that situation. Pick up your courses, study them. If there are aspects you don't understand, meet those that can help you. And if you are still having challenges, you have the academic director, we have some of us in the school that you can walk up to. And we have people in almost all the departments we can connect you with that will help you and teach you some of this. Some people come to me for MTS 101, 102. Some say they've been failing it. I'm so busy that I can't begin to sit down to teach all the students that come for um, MTS 101 or 102 or any other MTS courses. But I have good students at each level that I always assign them to. Okay, you, you fail MTS 101 before. Now, are you serious? You want to study and buy three years? So I call one of the good students. Please help me to teach her. Help me to. And they discuss. Look at their timetables and they meet. And many of them do well. So the best thing you can do is to study hard, cover the course content, and know it. Be a master of your courses. But Usually when you go for an exam, maybe out of 25 questions, if you are so outstanding, maybe you're able to answer 20 or 22 successfully. But the other ones, you can just guess. And you, there's also what we call elimination. You have seen the question. You know by all means option D can never be the answer. Eliminate that. Option B may never be the answer. Eliminate that. You are left with A and C. So you now have the probability of one over two half chances of getting your answer. So wisdom is applicable in all things. I pray that God will help you in Jesus. Let's jump our hands together. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I believe that we are really enjoying the entire session. Um, there's a question here, and this question, I've been looking, I've, I've been looking on the question for the past five minutes, you know, before uh, Dr. Falabi, because the question is so interesting, and I'll, 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 I was thinking of writing a question to one of our lecturers for but I would love all of our lecturers to really see to this question because it's a very, very realistic question. And when I, when I say realistic, Sam, I really mean it because this is what a lot of people have in their mindset. So the question goes thus, what advice will you give to a student who think that his result he gained or he has gained in an institution may not be of use and it's better for him to make money rather than pursuing grade. Since, since his academic is also a means of making money. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read the question again. <laughs> yes, your academics is not just a means of making money. You want to acquire knowledge. You want us to call you an engineer, a doctor, an architect, and so on. Now, the advice is this. The Bible tells us that whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all that. Even if you want to be a footballer, by the time you are playing your ball and say, that's a fault, look at Lino Messi, you know the guy is intelligent. Yes. But what you are doing now, if you are a failure at that, in the future we will make reference to that. Achieve your success, put in your best. And may I tell you, you may think that the certificate you are about to get or you are studying for, you don't need it. That may not be the source of what you will use to feed yourself, your family eventually, for life. So you don't know what the future holds. 
God has placed something on your hand, make the best use of the opportunity you have, put in your best, and get the best for me. Don't belong to the school of thought that will tell us that education is scam. You know, you have it on Facebook and all of that. Yes, there are skills, there are things you can do. But some students on campus, they are into online jobs, they make more money than even with the staff. All of these things are good, but you don't do them at the detriment of your studies. Please, study so hard. Get your certificate, get the best you can, and but many of you want to even travel out. If you have a second class offer, you have a first class, your chances of having a scholarship for your master is so high. But when you now say, uh, uh, you, whatever I have, I just want to have it, or I don't even care, you have a finish with a 2-2 two -two or a third class, your chances of leaving that your second goal or your first goal will now be so dim. So please, make the best use of what you have and get something outstanding for me. And I pray that God will help you in Jesus. Amen. Let's jump our hands together. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So we have this question. It says, good day, Marzan. my answers. As a student who has interest in electrical engineering, as far as much that I had to go learn the skills, but then eventually didn't meet the cutoff mark for that course, but then privileged to be transferred to a different course entirely, what should she do? Um, praise the Lord. Uh, there are a lot of cases like that. You know, you aim at a course, but eventually you don't get that course. Uh, you might not even know. Maybe it is the will of God. It has happened in a lot of cases where you are aiming with all your strength to get something, but God had, has a better plan for you, and he worked it out for you to be given another course. That might, that might be the will of God, although it may not be in all cases. But if you are a child of God and you, you applied for electrical engineering and you were not given, but you were lucky to be given another course, some other people did not get admission. They didn't get admitted and maybe found themselves somewhere else. So if you are here for another course, just grow to love the course. You know. Try and um, do research you know, to get more information about the course and the prospects of that course. And then grow to love it. Because if you don't love that course, it might also affect your academic performance. So the first thing is that you settle down and learn and you learn and relearn to learn to i mean to like that course L learn to love it and uh, tr try and um, have idea of some of the prospects of the course there isn't any course that you will study you say it's useless you know it's in your hands what you get out of that course you know what you make of it is in your hands so uh, whatever course you are studying the best thing is to love it so that you perform excellently well. You know, there is a, our a professor here had first class in mathematics. You know that it's not, it's not more money to have <laughs> first class in mathematics. So in any course you are studying, if you have the first class in that course, you know what it means. You know, it gives you opportunity. You can have opportunity for scholarships to travel out. You know, or even in Nigeria here, yeah, you have prospects. So don't say this course, I know it's not, a, it's, it's, a, it's not a good course. I want to do electrical uh, electronics by all means. There are some people who, even did, who did that course and they are not, they, you know, they are no, nowhere. So whatever you have given, I mean, whatever you are given, no, believe that God has given, you have that course for a purpose, you know, and you, you put your mind at it, you love it, and you pray to God to guide you aright and... The sky is your starting point. <laughs> Maybe Thank I, you very much, I want to say something. Oh, stay on that. Uh, you know, Bible says whatever your hands find to do, you do what? Do it with your mind. You know, I, I wanted to study computer science, actually. And I was given applied geophysics. But I made up my mind that in this, I will put in my best. And it has always been like that. 
you know, each time at every stage of my career. When I finished geophysics, I wanted to go in geophysics line and I got admission, I got scholarship in Netherlands and I thought I was doing, going to do geophysics. I didn't know that it was called GIS work, applied to, apply. So when I got to Netherlands and every coursework was just remote sensing, GIS, applied to, you know, initially I felt, ah, no, this is not what I was expecting. I was expecting called geophysics applied to applied sciences, earth science. And I made up my mind, no, I was going to be the best. Even though I don't have background in GIS, but I put in a effort, and in that place, if you don't perform, they send you back to Nigeria. And many of my colleagues had background in this before they came, but I became one of the best in that set. You know, and the same thing with PhD too. I, I was interviewed for a particular research. When I got to the place, they said, my supervisor said they were expecting a, a funding for that particular purpose. That's why they brought me. Now, this is a new research. You are a GIS person. Work in this area. Ah, it's like a new thing. But I just would like to go back to Nigeria and said, I don't I want to have PhD again. No, I said, this is, I'm going to do it. And I did it, and I did it excellent. That's what is still helping me today. And uh, one has gotten some grants so in that same line. So this, I want to encourage you, if you find yourself in any department, don't see it as uh, just any old course. You know, because some students, are, I happen to cancel a brother. One, I think one of our members, too, he, he, in fact, he said he's pulling out because he was not performing well, because he felt he wanted to do aeronautic engineering, and he found himself in GIS and most sensing. Well, unfortunately and unfortunately, his result was bad. He didn't meet up. So please, right from the onset, whatever you are given, do it. Because you never know the plan of God for your life. God has great plan for you in the same course. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I want to direct this question to you, sir. The question is talking about sources. Just an interesting question, too. See, is success limited to good grade? Can we call a man successful if he failed in school but succeed in skill learning? Yes. Uh, well, different people define success in different ways. And success as a definition for Mr. A is different from Mr. B. Well, in general, we say success is an achievement of a worthwhile goal. Now, that's what people say. But at that stage, is, you know, success as a short-term, long-term, a medium and short, long-term uh, success, long-term goals. But then for somebody who failed in academics, right, but succeed in the other aspects, it's still is success. Praise the Lord. Yes, we acquire academics. You know, not everybody also gets good grade at the end of the day, but the major thing we acquire in academics, you acquire skills, you acquire knowledge. At least you are able to, you know, apply some education you have acquired, whether you graduated with first class, you graduated with 2-2, you graduated with 2-1, uh, but still you have acquired something. Praise the Lord. Now, you applying that, because no matter, like our prof said, if, if you are in entrepreneurship, you need your academics, you need your education background to, to assist you, to succeed in that area. So if you are successful, and even though you didn't make it so much in academics, you are still a successful person. It depends on how you define your success. If your success is for you, because some people have different direct, I mean, focus in life, some want to be an entrepreneur. I've, had, I've seen people who even achieved great success. They didn't want to, they didn't want to apply for any job outside. They started their own business. In fact, some guys in my department, they did, they, in fact, they did a lot of, I mean, they got good results. And some of them got fine, fine results, but they started their own business. They never made any attempt to apply for any job, and they are doing very fine at the moment. So if yours is entrepreneurial after, the, after your education and you are successful, and even if you didn't have a good grade, at the end of the day, you have not failed. Praise the Lord. You have not failed. You are 
also a successful person as long as you achieve your goal. Do you understand? Thank you. Let's jam our hands together. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, lastly, we have a question here. It says, good evening, Mar, sir. Please, for one who isn't outspoken to colleagues, does it have any negative effect on the person? So please, some of us were shy before, but there comes a time in 